y'all should be super proud of me for not cursing in this video because boy do i wanna do i want to curse oh man just just drop them all in there like, like sprinkle them like 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 like, 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 like salt man what is it the salt man what are what are memes i don't i'm doing my best We're gonna do a TLDR a summary because I know I know we like like bite-sized si like pieces of information. So if anybody wants to take a clip and share it, this is the moment. Why the peacock dress shouldn't be made? There are other beautiful dresses that can be made. There are other dream dresses. There are other ways to collaborate with Indian embroiderers and artisans. And there are other dresses that will dazzle people when you remake them. This specific dress will hurt Indians in the costuming community and will hurt people of color in the costuming community. This specific dress will make people think, despite Kathy's intent, that she cares more about her love of a dress than those that are hurt by its recreation. People won't say it to Kathy's face, they won't, but they will be uncomfortable with her. And people of color talk to each other to keep ourselves safe. We will tell each other, you know, to be wary of people like Kathy who talk the talk, but when it comes down to it, don't walk the walk. This dress is literally a symbol of the victory of the British over India. It is celebrating how the resources of India was a prize for the British people. It is India was just another jewel in the English crown. It is not valuing the Indian people, but just the wealth that the British could steal from this country that they conquered and the way that they could display the resources of this country in the most elaborate and gaudy fashion. This dress Dress is a dehumanization of the Indian people. It's a reduction of our identity as human beings to resources. And that is what we were to colonists. That is what we were when this dress was made. Kathy, do not make this dress. I am an Indian woman. I was born and raised in New Jersey and my parents are from India. And I am a light-skinned Indian woman. With that, I am also the darkest skinned person in my family. Biggest disclaimer here, I am not a monolith for how Indian people in costuming feel about this dress. I would also like to add another disclaimer in that I'm not perfect and I'm not coming at people saying that they need to be perfect. I'm just saying that we have to always try to be better. I think we should always strive to err on the side of kindness. And I think that if more people start trying to do that, we would be better off. Here is the main crux of the matter. Kathy has obviously been thinking about making this dress for 10 years. This is a big project. This is very near and dear to her heart. But just because you didn't know that something you were making or something that you were invested in was problematic doesn't mean it's okay to continue in the same vein once you find out. So now I come to my direct qualms about all of this. Specifically, I come to my direct issues with Kathy continuing to make this dress, which is that your intent does not matter. If you are doing something that is causing a lot of people hurt, doesn't matter if you went in there with good intentions, doesn't matter if you never meant to hurt anybody, their hurt is real and you were wrong for hurting them. That's it. That is, that is it. You know, it's kind of like the foundation of what makes a good apology. You don't, you, when you hurt somebody, you say, I am sorry I hurt you. You don't say, I'm sorry I hurt you, but I meant it nicely so you shouldn't be hurt. That's not an apology. That's redirecting your mess up. And I think the thing that upset me the most about all of this was when Kathy found out that this dress was problematic, her whole video about it was wrapped in a, woe is me, my favorite thing is racist package. And while I would hope that wasn't the intent of that video, that's how it was seen by myself. As somebody who was hurt by the actual fact that this dress was being recreated. That video came off of a, oh no, I love this so much and I care about it so much, but it's problematic how hurt I am about this. And it's it's not about your favorite thing being racist. It's about the fact that your favorite thing is racist and if you make it, you will hurt people deeply, deeply. And that hurt is way more than the hurt of, oh, my favorite thing is problematic. That is the deep hurt of you are recreating something that devalues my people as a people and boils us down to the resources that we can provide to the furtherment and betterment of white people. I know this is Kathy's dream dress. 
that she really wants to make it. And like, this is like her being like, yeah, yeah, you know, you can do it. You can make your dream dress. And if you want to be like, hey, you can make your impossible dress because that seems to be the branding of her whole Peacock video series. That message is incredibly lost, incredibly lost by outsourcing the labor. And you know, Kathy's already done a little bit where she, you know, is highlighting the artisans in India and trying to get their names like re-involved in this. And I'm sure she's going to do more of that, but that's just secondary to the main issue here. Because if the whole thing is that you can make your impossible project, because I can, because I, Kathy, can, that message is super ruined because she's not really, she's not making the project. She is outsourcing the most difficult part of it. She's specifically not doing the part of this dress that makes it impossible. Because when you take away the embroidery, it's just like a basic Edwardian ball gown. It is basic. And, and that's why the video where she was like, oh man, I realized that I couldn't do this embroidery on my own because my hands hurt. Red like, oh man, I can't do this. Embroidery is so difficult, but I'm going to outsource it with my money because then I will still get the achievement and clout and fame of doing the thing, but my hands won't hurt. You're literally not doing the most difficult part. It's only the impossible dress if you do it all yourself, you know? Otherwise it's a, I can do it because I have money dress. And I don't, I don't think that's the branding that she's going for, but that is, that is the message that is happening here. It's another issue of your intent does not equal your results. You can have the goodest intentions and I suspect that she has good intentions while doing this, you know? Like I'm not coming in into this club saying that Kathy's a terrible person because I don't believe that. I believe that she is a person who's just trying, like all of us. And I think when it comes down to it, if you're a person who's just trying and you realize that your results do not match your intent, that's when you have to edit. Because the intent of this dress is to be something, you know, lovely and wonderful to recreate for this community, to be like, yes, you can do it too. But what is actually happening with this dress is it's becoming a, I can do this dress because I have money dress, not a motivational thing for the community. And this is all wrapped up in the layer of this would not matter as much and it would not be as bad if it wasn't for the fact that this dress is intensely hurtful for people of color. This brings up all the trauma that we have faced. I'm three generations removed from this and we still feel the BS of colonialism. And I still feel racism every single day when I live here in the US. You know, I feel that white people only value the beauty of like, you know, the silks that we can make or like the shiny jewelry that we have. They don't care about us as people. And this dress is just furthering that implication. So Kathy briefly touched on the history of this dress when she made her, oh no, this dress is problematic video. I wanna reiterate it because we have to, we have to see how truly gross this dress is because of its context. So this dress was specifically worn to the Delhi Durbar. This was an event hosted by the British to appoint a British monarch as the emperor of India. Let that sink in. Like sit with that for a second because it's pretty gross. There were only three that were ever held. One was in 1877, one was in 1903, and one was in 1911. And this peacock dress was worn at the second by the wife of the viceroy of India. And they were the ones that were hosting this event. This event was supposed to be held again in 1936, but the Indian National Congress passed a motion weeks after the ascension of the new king at the time that called for a boycott of any visit of the new British monarch. India only gained independence in 1947. My grandparents were born before that. My grandfather was born in 1937. My grandma was born in 1945. There are people still alive who remember a time of British occupancy. And there are two, three generations of people who have never experienced that, which is lovely. But this was all very, very recent. This hurt is very recent. Art doesn't exist in a bubble. Art within its historical context will always have a meaning. And I should clarify that I don't have a problem with every sort of historical dress that you could possibly make. I can go for it. Obviously, there are, are some problematic pieces of clothing that have been made in history. And we're slowly starting to talk about that in the historical community. And I'm really proud of this. A big example of this is the problematic history of the chemise à la red. But I'm not saying to never reconstruct a dress. All I'm saying is to think about the dresses that you want to reconstruct because some cannot be separated from their intent. And because art is not separate from its environment and this dress is the symbol of colonial victory over India, it should not be made. You know, I'm gonna say it now, give me another dress with that sort of connotations and I'm gonna I'll, I'll cancel that one as well. So while I personally feel that this dress shouldn't be made, obviously Kathy is free to do whatever she wants. You know, you, the royal, everybody watching this video, you are allowed to do whatever you want, but people will judge you for your actions. That is it. And the judgment that will occur if this dress is made is that Kathy would be valuing her own love of a dress 
over the hurt that it causes POC. You can't dissect that in any other way. You know, at this point, intent doesn't matter because what is occurring is that people are being hurt. And by continuing in this path, those people will be hurt. Therefore, don't do it. And hey, listen, I get it. This, like, she's invested. This is a big project. She's been into this for like 10 years, uh, 15 years, longer than I've been in cosplay and stuff for sure. Longer than I've been involved in the historical costuming community. And are people gonna be upset if she decides to not make this dress? Yeah, probably. But here's the thing. You have to think about who you are upsetting by making this dress versus not making this dress. By making this dress, you are implicitly supporting the trauma of colonialism and bringing up that trauma that still affects people of color today. The impacts of colonialism have not gone away. They still are there. So many countries of color are considered third world countries because of the brutal theft of our resources and the violence against our people. And by making this dress, you are saying that you don't care that this dress brings that hurt back up because that is what this dress does. This dress is a symbol of yay colonialism. We did it. That is what it is. And the follow-up bit of this is, who would you hurt by not making this dress? You would be disappointing fans. That's it. People would be sad because you didn't make a pretty dress. One of these parties is not like the others. One party is genuinely hurt by the trauma that is brought back by this dress. And the other one is like, aw man, we thought she'd make this. Aw heck. I'm sad. Doesn't take a genius to know that these are not equal. And you know, there's a third party involved in all of this. You know, Kathy was talking about in her video how she is working with Indian embroiderers to get this fabric made for this dress. And so not making this dress would mean not working with them and not paying them. That's valid. But you know what you could do? Literally any other project with embroidery. There are so many, so many things that you could collaborate on with a group of highly skilled Indian embroiderers because let me say, oh man, would that be, that would be so cool. Just not this, not this one. Don't do it. Just don't. And the people who are being ostracized by the remaking of the peacock dress are primarily POC. And POC are already wary of historical costuming in general. This is a very tight-knit community. It has a reputation for being elitist in only using natural fibers, which we know is BS and it is a very expensive hobby to get into. You know, there's already a lot of barriers of entry to this community. And having a person as big in this community as Kathy making this dress, it makes this community even less welcoming to POC. Kathy is the face of Foundations Revealed and Foundations Revealed is a really great resource in this community. And it's really big in this community. And having somebody who is the face of a resource for a specific community making a dress this terrible colors everything that you believe about the community. You're not gonna believe the historical costume community is truly inclusive if one of the big people in this community is making a racist dress. Or not. It's right there. It's there on the label. And the problem is that I suspect a lot of people feel like this. Actually, you know, I know that a lot of people of color in this community feel like this. We don't speak up because we don't know that we can say that we really don't like the peacock dress because Kathy is such a big name and fans won't hesitate to retaliate against people of color and call us overly sensitive. And fans won't hesitate to come for the brown girl who's trying to stand up for herself versus telling the white woman to not do something hurtful. And here's the fact of the matter. Not everybody's gonna care about this dress. Not everybody should care about this dress, but some people will be hurt by its recreation. And that's why I'm making this video. Recreating this dress will hurt people. Here's my bottom line. If people are disappointed if Kathy doesn't make this dress, well, they kind of deserve to be disappointed. They wanted to remake a racist dress, like don't do it. Find better things to like. I understand that ultimately YouTubers are business people and Kathy, even more than the rest of them, is a business person. She's got foundations revealed. She is a businesswoman. But if you prioritize making people comfortable over not causing hurt to people of color, you're doing it wrong. I've seen the comments on Kathy's video where she talks about the problematic history of this dress. And there are a lot of Indians on there who are like, yay, she's making it. We love this dress, we support you. The approval of Indians in India is not enough in the face of the disapproval of Indians in the West. People of color in their home country do not experience racism like people of color in the West do. Obviously they know that racism is a thing. It's like a mythical creature that they haven't actually experienced. There are currently at least two generations of people in India who have never experienced British rule and the day-to-day -day racism of white people. This experience is not the same as brown people living in white country experiencing that racism and vitriol 
Israel on a daily basis. Somebody's told me that their husband was born and raised in Nigeria and they went to England as a teenager and they experienced racism in England, obviously. And they were like, I never knew it was this bad. It's very easy for Asians in Asia to not know the depths of the hatred that some white people hold for people of color. It is very easy for them to not understand the trauma of racism that their Asian brothers and sisters in white countries face. And because of that, it is very easy for them to see a white person making something from their culture as truly appreciation. But when you live in the West and when you're surrounded by that racism, you know that people in these countries do not value you as a person. They only value the things that your people have made. They value the things, they value the resources, they value the pretty shiny jewels that your people can excavate. They don't value your people. They don't value your souls. And that is what matters. So I know that was probably a lot. You know, it was a lot for me to make this video. I've been sucking myself up about it for a while because it is, this is a lot of emotional labor. I'm gonna go curl up in my bed for a bit and like burrito. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you did a learn. I hope you are tired by this. I don't want people to struggle, but I need you to understand that this dress exhausts me. This dress truly, truly drains me and it upsets me beyond what I can talk about at a camera. This dress sucks. This dress hurts. This dress is a symbol of why colonialism is great and colonialism is the worst. Kathy, do not make this dress. Nami out.